don't receive it. And they feel perhaps that there are students who do receive their MA for, for certain reasons who don't spend it, who don't need that money. So, so how about those students who are on the cusp of the MA? Well, it, it is actually graduating. I mean, it's something that I guess we should be constantly looking at because sometimes you look at something absolutely like first time. And in Scotland, which is, of course, uh, led the way in so many of these issues, has actually had to retrench that position and so that uh, many young people who, um, I mean, it was up from 20 to 30,000 in a greater way to 30 to 20 to 10. And that is all gone. So it's only those who are in the lowest possible income who get anything at all. And so, uh, yes, once you get up to the, the margins of 31,000, uh, then, of course, it is uh, people then feel good lord, I've, I've lost that entirely and we're only a few hundred pounds a year as a family uh, over that. Uh, it's very difficult to get these sorts of arrangements absolutely right and fair. Uh, I, I accept that. Uh, my policy, should all full-time students be entitled to education rates in that allowance? Well, I'm interested in Andy speaking for the Conservative Party when he tells me we're about to uh, do away with it and I have to tell him that the Conservatives don't have any proposals. Uh, to do uh, away with the EMA, but EMA well, clearly... Well, Chris Grayling has said that um, it's, a, it's an example of the government trying to fill the books. So, well, does the Conservative have a policy on this? Or our, 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 our policy is that it, it will remain, but it does seem to me that it creates two clear classes of students, like those who get EMA and those who don't. And if you've got two students together in the classroom, why should one get a, a sum of money uh, on a regular basis because of the income of their parents and the other one doesn't. It, it, it doesn't seem to make sense. It would seem to be fair to say that are all students get it or, or no students get it. What, what's um, your policy then? Are all students going to get it? Are no students going to get it? Our, our policy, quite frankly right now, is, is to leave the EMA as it currently is, but I think it's something that probably needs looking at. I mean, the more cynical of us might consider it as perhaps a bit of a bribe to encourage people to stay in education when they might otherwise have left, and it's done something about boosting numbers in, in education. Um, we really need to see whether the money's being widely spent, wisely spent. If we look at what the budget is, I'm sure that within uh, other aspects of education, in terms of making more places available, in making more uh, modern apprenticeships available, that would seem to me to be a better use of the money. And if you had to answer this, this, this charge that um, it's not fair that in one class, um, some of the class may receive money for being at school, whereas other students don't receive that money, and they may be very similar backgrounds, or they may feel they're from very similar backgrounds. Well, I, I think that um, it's very easy for uh, someone to say what Mark has just said. That would be, if you take that one step further and look at when students go to university, it's like saying all oh, students at university should have a full grant irrespective of their family circumstances. And of course, um, if Mark's advocating everyone getting in, then maybe he's advocating everyone getting a full grant to, to university, which I don't think would be his party's policy. I, th I think that the best chance that young people have of being supported in education is through a labor government, which is actually committed to uh, enfranchising as many young people as possible to make the full use of the educational opportunities that are available to them. Okay, thank you. What, what would be your opinion on the opinion of the Liberal Democrats on the EMA? Um, should all full-time students be allowed it? Would full-time students not be allowed it? Um, I have to say that in many respects I agree with Andy that in an ideal world it would be wonderful if every student could get the EMA, but it's not an ideal world. Um, if you take money from one area to put into another, somebody is losing somewhere along the line. Fairness doesn't mean treating everybody in the same way. It's giving everybody the same opportunity. And there's a difference. I'm a teacher. I have, over the last 20 odd years, taught an awful lot of year 10, year 11 students and had them in my form as a form tutor. And many of those, before the EMA came along, did not continue into further education because they could not afford to. Those who could afford to, did so. Many bright students didn't do it because their families needed them to go out to work to bring money in. 
And I think it was dreadful that those young people didn't get that opportunity simply because their families couldn't afford it and other families could. So you don't think this is just the government trying to sort of uh, reduce the unemployment figures by increasing students? No, I don't. Otherwise? I have seen the benefit of EMA for those students <coughs> whose families are struggling. I wish to be there when I was that age, going into further education. My parents wanted me to leave school at 15 to get a job. They didn't want me to stay on. I had to come to a compromise with them. I had to work on Saturdays and I had to work in the holidays to raise enough money. My mum said to me, if you want to stay on at school, you've got to buy your own clothes, you've got to buy your own shoes, we'll buy your school uniform, that's all we can afford. And that was the compromise we made so I could get on to get further education. Nowadays, young people in my situation don't have to make that decision. You are getting that help. Why should families who are earning, the students of families who are earning possibly 60,000 plus, in some cases, in some parts of the country, 100,000 pounds plus, why should they get the benefit? Their parents can afford to keep them. Those students whose parents are only earning 20,000, 15,000 are struggling. We have to be careful about where we put the money. It's a hard world out there. We have to be realistic, we have to be grown up about this. You know money doesn't grow on trees. And so where the EMA is at the moment, I think is right. In an ideal world, it would be wonderful if everybody received it. But we never have lived in an ideal world, and we never will, I'm afraid. Thank you. David Burton, you, you were a student of, of uh, further education until last year. What's your experience of EMA from the, from the ground, really? You, you would have friends who, who received it. What would you, how would you sum up your experiences? Should all full-time students be entitled to it? Well, I think the point that I would make uh, is I agree with the student general argument uh, concerning the, what, what EMA is designed for. It's designed to help impoverished families. It's designed to be spent on clothes and food, but I think that uh, a main point that this question is getting at is the fact that EMA is not always spent on those things. A lot of people use their EMA spend on luxuries. They buy Xbox games and clothes with it, and the students who are receiving EMA look at that and say, how come they're getting free money to spend on these luxuries, and I'm not. So I, I would take the point. <laughs> Point that uh, EMA is designed <coughs> primarily to, to help <coughs> families, but I wouldn't say that in its current form it, it is a perfect system. If, if you're just going to dole out cash to, uh, to students, then I don't see why some students should be favoured over others. Uh, a system that they've got in France is actually that students from divide, deprived backgrounds um, get food vouchers and clothes vouchers rather than actual uh, physical money, so they don't really get a choice of what they spend it on. And I think if the, the aim of EMA is to, is to help people out with food and, food and clothes, then it should be distributed in voucher form and not as cash. If you're just going to give out cash, then you should give it to everyone. Okay, thank you. Alan Scotland, what, what's your opinion on this? Well, I, I think going beyond the headlines and saying, accepting the fact that we're not in an ideal world, the real world is that there are people who are feeling themselves marginalised because they just about miss the income and support that they could do with. But I would take the point that was raised earlier, I'm not sure that really this is being put to the use it's meant to be put, put to. And it needs pressure testing and examining could there be better ways where we could right across the board help our students, 60 to 80 year olds, uh, with support. Could we channel that?